Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about why uh, Palmer 80s or homemade guns or so-called ghost guns, right? Like these guns I have over here. Uh, why they are rarely used in crimes. Um, why contrary to what the, uh, the media and the Democrat Party tells you, criminals are not home building these guns, okay? Um, and there's a reason for that, okay? They're difficult to build. Now, Biden told us that you could put these things together in 30 minutes. And yeah, it might be true. You might be able to assemble it in 30 minutes, but that doesn't mean that the gun's going to work. I have here a G26 P80 that I've been working on for two weeks. Okay, it, maybe it took me, I don't know, 40 minutes to put the gun together, uh, but I still can't get it right. Magazine in, around the chamber. Okay. That's what the gun does. Okay, I've been working on this for two weeks trying to get this thing to work right. I, I've tried everything now here's the thing once you put this gun together right you may have something that looks like a gun right so you throw all the pieces together they look like a gun right it looks like a gun looks like it's gonna work but uh, with these P80s you gotta spend a lot of time working these rails right you gotta basically have a Dremel like this right all right so and, th and this is this goes after the, the 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 normal finishing work right you gotta get under those rails and you gotta work them on all sides to get them even, okay? And, and here's the thing, you gotta work on it a little bit and shoot it. You can't do this in your house, okay? In order to build these guns, you pretty much have to have access to a range. You have to have access to some place where you can work on the gun, test it, work on it some more, test it. Um, you know, so the rails almost always give us a problem. The barrels give me a problem. Um, first problem I usually have is you throw a round into the, into the chamber and they'll get stuck in it. Now I've already worked this one so that, you know, they'll, you know, because that's what it's supposed to do, right? But if you look at it, I've actually took a Dremel to the inside of this chamber and I, I, I polished it. I had to open it up a little bit to get this to work, okay? That's outside of the 30 minutes that, that they tell you that it takes to put these guns together. Another problem I typically have is I usually have to file down the top of the barrel here. All right, and again, that's a, a, a trial and error process. How much do I have to file it down? Um, you know, also the slide over here, all right? You see over there, there's some filing marks over there. I had to file down the inside of this uh, slide where the barrel and the slide lock up. All right, so this is something that you, you, you kind of have to study really carefully. You know, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a take a round like this, I'll put it in there, and I'll basically, I'll, you know, and I'll try to work it and see, try to get it to be smooth, right? So I can see this is not really smooth compared to some of the other ones I've built. So, you know, this is a continuing process about two weeks, two weeks in now, and I still can't get this pistol right here to work correctly, okay? And I have put many, many, many hours into this. Um, you know, I would say I probably put more than eight hours into this, um, you know, between like just looking at it, you know, studying the gun, looking at videos on YouTube, trying to, you know, research this, you know, going to different channels like Gun Streamer, you know, talking to people online, you know, who have, who have built a gun similar to this particular model, trying to get information from them. Uh, I can, you know, and, and here's the thing, this is not my first gun. I have built other guns. I, I have other guns that work properly, but it took me time to build these guns. Um, and, and here's the thing, each of these guns that I have built, right, because it took so much effort uh, to build them and then troubleshoot them and get them to work, they're very personal to me, okay? This Glock over here that I bought from the gun store, right? You know, with this gun, I really, you know, if I, let's say somebody needed a gun and you know, uh, you know, there was a shortage out there. Hey, I wouldn't mind going to the over to the to the gun shop and selling this gun, right? Because I could do a, a legal transfer, you know, through an FFL. I could sell this gun, um, and I could just, you know, later on go buy another gun that looks just like this. Because this is a factory-made gun. I have no personal connection to this gun that's made by Glock. These guns, on the other hand, 
I have a very personal connection with these guns. I built these myself. I spent a lot of time, you know, getting these to work right. Um, you know, I made many mistakes along the way. Okay, I learned from my mistakes. Um, so it's not just a matter of throwing the parts together and voila, you got a gun that works. There's, there's a lot of time involved and uh, an important, important factor is that you have to, you know, take this gun that you built, go to the gun range, test it, take it back home, work on it some more, get back to the gun range. So, you know, unless you have property that you can shoot on, you know, it could take you many, many months of going, you know, between your house and the range of, of trying to get these guns to work. So, uh, so that's the first reason. People that, that make these guns, they, they, first of all, you got to collect a lot of information, do a lot of research on how to debug them, right? You got to put a lot of time into debugging them. Um, and then by the, by the time you're done, you know, you're going to have a gun that's very personal to you. You're not going to want to sell that gun uh, because there's no amount of money that you're going to get that's going to be equal to the time and love that you put into the gun that you built. Okay, so, so that's, that's part of the reason why people that make these guns, they don't sell them usually. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be interested in selling them. Um, the criminals, they don't have the time uh, or the interest in learning how to build these guns. Okay. Uh, so that's the reason why you really don't see these P80s showing up uh, too much at uh, uh, at crime scenes. Now, uh, just this past week, I saw some news story. Uh, apparently, they raided some some uh, drug house. Uh, they found a whole bunch of meth there, right? Like you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of, mu of meth. And uh, the headline item was uh, ghost guns and other guns found uh, at this drug house. Okay, so uh, they had a bunch of guns. Some of them happened to be some of these ghost guns that probably didn't work, right? Uh, but the point is that they had other guns too. Um, why are these guns any different from those guns? Now, here's the thing. Let's say, um, you know, because people make a big deal out of the fact that these guns don't have a serial number on them, okay? That, that really doesn't mean anything. Um, because first of all, the serial number that's on these guns, okay, between, from, from the time that you purchased the gun, um, you know, Let's say you you know when when, they, when when you when you do the transfer, you know everything's being handwritten. Um, the, you know it's really easy for these serial numbers at, at somewhere along the way of the recording process to get mixed up, especially since these serial numbers are really long. If you uh, ever lose a gun, right, or a gun is stolen from you, let's say someone breaks into your house and steals a gun, and you file a police report, right? If you have a serial number to give to the police to put on the police report, right? Um, you don't have to provide any proof that that is the correct serial number, all right? So, so, so basically, let's say you hand wrote the serial number down somewhere because it's not like when you buy a gun, you get like a title or something with it that has a serial number on it, right? Um, you know, you basically you just look at look at the gun, you write down the serial number on a piece of paper, right? Because that's what I do with all my my factory guns. I just have a, a book where I write down my serial numbers um, by hand, and if if the gun were to ever be stolen. You know, I would basically go to my book, look at this serial number that I hand wrote, um, and then give it to the police, right? So there's a lot of places where you can, that, where a mistake can be made there. You know, I might have made a mistake when I first put the serial number into my book. Uh, when I gave it to the officer, I may have made a mistake in giving them. The officer might have made a mistake in writing it down when he goes back to do his data entry. There might be a mistake made at that point. So there's many steps along the way where a uh, uh, where a mistake can be made, and and that's one of the reasons why uh, um, you know I, I don't think that you know I, I generally don't tell people if you're ever involved in a traffic stop, don't volunteer any information that you don't need to tell. Don't tell the police that you have a gun in the car unless you're required to by your state, unless you have a duty to inform. Because the reason is they may want to run the serial number on your gun. And here's the thing, somebody might have made a mistake when they reported their gun lost or stolen and accidentally gave them the serial number that's on your gun, okay? So this whole serial number and trying to trace guns uh, is extremely inaccurate. Now, beyond that, right? So here I have a factory Glock and it's got the serial number in three places. Now, normally they only need to put it on the frame right here, but on this Glock, actually went a step further, they put it on the slide 
um, and they put it on the barrel too. Okay, normally it doesn't have it on the slide in the barrel, but Glock went that extra step. They got it in three places. So, let's say I let's say I was a criminal, right? Hypothetical situation. I am a criminal, and I'm looking to illegally sell this gun to another criminal. Okay, um, let's say I'm you know I did a straw purchase, whatever. So, why would I? If I'm, you know, first of all, if I'm, if I have the intention of doing something illegal, why wouldn't I go a step further and, you know, cover my tracks? All I would have to do is take this Dremel that I have because obviously I'm building guns, so I'm going to have a simple tool like this, right? And with this tool right here, I can scratch off the serial number from 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 the frame where it usually is, but I can also take it off the slide and the barrel and any other place where I can put it. Obviously, the serial number is going to be big and, 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 and legible, right, because people have to be able to see it. So it's not like they're going to put a serial number on the gun in such a way that uh, people can't see it, right? Um, so it's really easy to scratch off the serial number. And, and by taking the, screen, the serial number off this gun, uh, yeah, of course, you know, doing so, removing the serial number from a gun um, is against the law. But, hey, you're doing something illegal anyway. You know, you know, why, you know if, you, if you're willing to do the first thing illegal, why wouldn't you do the second thing illegal? Um, so it's really easy to get the serial number off this gun, and once the serial number comes off this factory gun, this gun is no more traceable than this gun, or that gun, or that gun, or that gun, okay? Um, so this whole thing with ghost guns, no serial numbers, is, is, is meaningless, okay? It means nothing because you can easily scratch the serial no number off of any gun, and uh, for that matter, the, this whole, the, the, the tracking system, um, is not that uh, foolproof anyway. In fact, from what I heard, 50% um, uh, of gun trace requests, uh, you know, hit a dead end, all right? So when police do a gun trace, right, where they try to, you know, when, you know let's say a, a, a gun shows up at a crime scene, right, and they have a gun and they try to trace it through the serial numbers, um, even when it does have a serial number, 50% of the time, um, it comes up to a dead end. Now that might be because um, you know the gun may have been sold multiple times illegally, and at some point, you know that 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 record was lost, or or when the uh, you know at some point during the process the there was a mistake made. But but those are statistics. Fifty percent of of uh, gun traces come back, uh, you know, come back at a dead end. So the, this whole thing with the the ghost guns, they've got no serial numbers, they're untraceable. Um, it, it, it's completely meaningless because you can pretty much take any factory gun and turn it into a ghost gun with a $30 Dremel that you can buy at, at Home Depot or Lowe's, right? Um, so and anybody that's building guns is going to have one of these, all right? So that's the reason why, um, I mean, going back to the main point of this uh, video, why ghost guns don't show up at crime scenes. Uh, the reason is because they're very difficult to build. Uh, it takes a, a lot of effort to make them reliable. And the people that, that do build them, uh, they don't part with them easy because it, it's, a very, it's very personal. They put a lot of personal time and effort uh, into customizing these guns. Like, yeah, look, I got a cool blue gun, right? It's got a red dot on it. You know, it's got these, these really cool yellow sights on here, right? Because, you know, even though this gun doesn't work right now, it's still very personal to me. I have I have affection for this gun. Um, it's not something that I would sell. So I hope you guys uh, found this video useful. And I, I'm sure most of the people watching, you know, the most of the people that are in my channel probably know this information anyway. But what you guys can do is you can share this video, pass it around, post it on your Facebook page, uh, and help other people out there understand why um, this whole big deal that they're making about the Polymer 80 so-called ghost guns. Um, it, it's really just smoke and mirrors. Um, so, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys.